Welcome to a lesson on the Jacobian for the change of three variables in a triple integral. We just got done discussing the Jacobian for a change of variables using double integrals. We're also familiar with triple integrals using rectangular, cylindrical, and spherical coordinates. And we know when converting a triple integral to cylindrical form, we had an extra factor of r in the integrand. And when converting to spherical form, we had extra factors of rho squared sine phi in our integrand. So now we'll define the Jacobian that will allow us to determine the integrating factor we're converting to any new coordinate system. And here's how it works. If R and S are regions of integration in the X, Y, Z space and U, V, W space, related by the following three equations, they convert from a rectangular triple integral to a triple integral in the U, V, W coordinate system. There's two major steps. First, we'll convert the given function in terms of X, Y, and Z to a function of u, v, and w. And then differential v will be replaced with the absolute value of the Jacobian, or the extra integrating factor, and then du, dv, dw, or any other order of the three differentials. And the Jacobian is defined by the three by three determinant of these partial derivatives with respects to u, v, and w. So what I want to do in this video, so in this video we're going to verify that differential v is equal to rho squared sine phi when converting from rectangular to spherical coordinates using triple integrals. So here are the three equations that relate rho phi and theta to x, y, and z. So let's go ahead and set up this three by three determinant and then make sure that we get rho squared sine phi. So the partial of x with respect to rho is going to be sine phi cosine theta. And the partial derivative of x with respect to phi, derivative of sine phi is going to be cosine phi. So we'll have rho cosine phi cosine theta. And then we'll have the partial of x with respect to theta. The derivative of cosine theta is going to be negative sine theta. So we'll have negative rho sine phi sine theta. And then for the second row, we'll have the partial derivative of y with respect to rho. It's going to be sine phi sine theta. And the partial of y with respect to phi, well, the derivative of sine phi is cosine phi. So we'll have rho cosine phi sine theta. And the partial of y with respect to theta, the derivative of sine theta is cosine theta. So we'll have rho sine phi cosine theta. And the third row will be the partial derivatives of z. So the partial of z with respect to rho will be cosine phi. The partial derivative of z with respect to phi is going to be negative rho sine phi. And the partial derivative with respect to theta is going to be zero. So let's go to the next page and evaluate this three by three determinant. So here's our three by three determinant. I'm going to go ahead and use the diagonal method to evaluate this three by three determinant rather than the cofactor expansion method. So remember for the diagonal method, we're going to determine the products of the diagonals in this direction. One, two, three, and then we'll find the sum of these, and then we'll subtract the products of these diagonals. So again, we're going to sum the product of the green diagonals, and then we'll subtract the product of the blue diagonals. So this first diagonal is going to be zero. The second diagonal here is going to be rho squared cosine squared phi, cosine squared theta, sine phi. Plus, the product of this diagonal here is going to be a positive rho squared, sine phi cubed, sine squared theta. And now we'll subtract 
the product of the blue diagonals. So starting with this diagonal here, we're going to have a negative row squared, cosine squared phi, sine squared theta, sine phi. plus, here we're going to have a negative row squared, cosine squared theta, sine cubed phi. And then this last product here would be zero. Now to keep these organized, let's go ahead and call this expression one, expression two, three, and four. Using equation two and equation four, let's look for the greatest common factor. They both have a row squared in common, as well as sine cubed phi. Let's go ahead and factor that out of these two expressions. So we'd be left with sine squared theta. Notice here we're subtracting a negative, so it's going to be a positive. And then from here, we're left with cosine squared theta. So we have this result plus, now let's take a look at equation one and three and do the same thing. Let's identify the greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor of these two expressions would be rho squared, cosine squared phi, sine phi. Looking at equation one, we'd be left with cosine squared theta, Again, notice here we're subtracting a negative, so it'll be plus, and we'd be left with sine squared theta. Well, this is equal to one, and so is this. So we're left with rho squared sine cubed phi plus rho squared cosine squared phi sine phi. Let's go ahead and continue simplifying this on the next page. Well, now we have a common factor of rho squared sine phi. Let's factor this again. We're left with sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi. And once again, we know that this is equal to one. So we finally have our end result. And this is our Jacobian. So when converting a triple integral from rectangular to spherical coordinates, we know that differential v is equal to the Jacobian times differential rho, differential phi, differential theta, or any other order of these differentials. Thank you for watching.